This week, All-Star Sheldon Surin. The NHLPA presents Be a Player, brought to you by EA Sports NHL 2004. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Welcome to this special edition of Be a Player. I'm Brett Lindros, coming to you this week from the home of the 2004 NHL All-Star Game, Minnesota. We've got a great All-Star show lined up for you. Coming up, we'll go one-on-one -on -one with Montreal Canadiens defenseman Sheldon Surrey. Sheldon joined an elite group of players this season, consisting of Wayne Gretzky, Mary Lemieux, and Matt Sundin, just to name a few, as having scored six points in a single game. Nice job, Shelley. We'll also give you an inside look into the sights and sounds of the NHL All-Star Weekend. But first, here's part one of our Via Player Profile with Sheldon Surrey. Sheldon, let's go back to the early days. Who were some of the NHL players you admired as a kid? The earliest I can remember watching hockey was the first year that the Oilers won the Cup. And you know what? I, I liked uh, I liked all the players. I liked Gretzky. You know, I liked Curry. Um, but as I started watching hockey and, and started playing defense, my favorite players were Scotty Stevens, Chris Chelios, Larry Robinson. Then I had the chance to play with uh, with Scotty, and that was like a dream come true. Down the wall. Now here is Stevens working with Surrey. They... Being drafted by Jersey and having one of your idols, Scott Stevens, playing there, and a lot of other good D-men. Um, did you look at that as a positive, or were you worried about cracking the lineup? When I got my name called by New Jersey, I was I was surprised because they'd made it to the finals the year before against New York, and you know, Jacques Lemaire was the coach. Larry was there. And, you know, Scotty Stevens, Kenny Danico, all these kind of guys that growing up were my idols. It was uh, it was thrilling, like, just to be at the draft and then to get called to a team that I thought was like a perfect fit where I could learn for some people was, it was awesome. Being around those guys we've already mentioned, Stevens, Niedermeyer, Danico, how do they help you become more of a complete player? I think uh, one of the things that New Jersey has a reputation for is there are a lot of teachers. They got some coaches who were uh, just take the time after practice. I mean, I remember Jacques Lemaire. Uh, would spend so much time with me. Uh, my job when I came in was to be a physical defenseman. You know, I remember him taking time with me to, to pass pucks after practice and, and just to make me a better player, you know. He didn't, he didn't just see that, that side of me. I think he's seen maybe that had the potential to maybe uh, move the puck better, maybe get more minutes, uh, maybe power play, whatever he's seen. He, he worked with me. Larry Robinson, the same thing. Just to watch those guys and see how they acted and to see how um, much they loved the game but really respected the game and respected other people, even respected me. You know, they had, I was a rookie, I didn't mean, mean anything to these guys, but they treated me uh, the same as they treated their, their guys that they played with for 10 years. I always felt comfortable there. I knew I wasn't going to take Scotty Stevens' job or Kenny Danico's job, but uh, you know, there was always that sixth or, or seventh D-man as a, as a first-year player. You just want to try to play well enough just to stay on the team. What was it like going to an NHL club that has such high standards and a winning tradition? One of the things is, is that they always challenge you to be your best. There, there was a certain level of success that they'd achieved, and you know, you got to live up to that. The pressure was on you, but it was, it was not, um, not any one person saying, you know, you got to do this or you got to do that. It was everyone always came to the rink that day to work hard and, and to try to get better. I think just having that experience of being on a team that kind of expected you to win um, really helped me because when I came to Montreal, I don't think there's a, a bigger place where there's more pressure on you. Um, so it helped me for that, it helped me prepare for that. And then came the trade. What was your reaction? You know, I, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't surprised by it. I'd start started to sit out some games. They'd called up a couple guys from the minors and, and then started playing them. So when I got traded, it wasn't unexpected for me. It was unexpected that I got traded to Montreal. Um, you know, it kind of came out of the blue, but I was ecstatic. You know, I, I knew personally it was, it was going to be a big challenge for me to, to come to a city where hockey is, is the focus, uh, the tradition, the, uh, the championships, everything. Um, but I knew Above all that, I was going to have an opportunity to become a better hockey player. You know, it wasn't they knew they weren't going to win a Stanley Cup that year or, 
the next year, um, you know, it was going to be a process. Now I think I'm sitting in a pretty good position where, you know, I don't think we're too far away from winning a cup. It's now time for Be A Player Trivia. To play, send your answer to NHLPA.com slash Be A Player. All correct answers will be entered in a random draw with a chance to win an NHL 2004 game courtesy of EA Sports. All other correct responses will be entered for a chance to win an autographed NHLPA jersey. For complete contest rules, visit NHLPA.com and click on Be A Player. Who scored the most goals in the 1990s? Coming up, Sheldon drives us wild. A nice fine North American product right here. A lot of power, a lot of room. This is a great truck right here. This is my favorite one. Welcome back. Aside from great hockey displays, NHL Fantasy also offers fans the chance to experience everything from a game of pickup hockey to seeing the Stanley Cup to testing their slap shot. Now we know Sheldon Surrey has a fast shot, but did you know he's also into fast cars? I recently took the defenseman to an auto show in Montreal where we looked at all the latest models. While you're checking that out, I'm going to stay here and work on my shot. I think I need it. The intricate little details on these cars is just unbelievable. I mean, look, that's where you can talk to your driver and... Exactly. How much would this car weigh? Uh, the weight yeah. is 600 uh, kilograms with the driver and with a full bag of gas. 600 kilos? Kilos. So it's like 13, uh, 13 20 uh, pounds. Your, your horsepower to pound ratio is like... <laughs> exactly. The ridiculous. ratio is very... It's close. It's yeah, close. exactly. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Do you think Shelly would fit in there? I want to know. Got the extended, extended cab for my family back here. Spin the cab. <laughs> Put mom and dad in the back. Yeah. No baby seat, but TV. TV monitor. We get a little, little Disney on. Keep the kids quiet. Yep. Now I don't know if our viewers know this, but Sheldon just had a baby. Well, how long ago? Four months. Four months. Baby girl. I didn't have. I didn't have. You it. didn't have it. Your family, your yeah, wife Angie, wife, and you. Yeah. So now you're thinking about baby seats and that kind of stuff? Yeah. All right, well, don't tell me now, but I want you to show me your new family ride. You got it. All right, you show me later. If they got wagons here. <laughs> well, I know you're into old cars. Tell me uh, some of the cars that you've had and some of the cars that you'd like to have. Like, this is this is my hobby here. I used to have a Corvette, 2000 Corvette, that I uh, bought from one of my old teammates, Randy McKay. Really fun car. Um, I got an old 66 uh, Pontiac convertible that I drive around, and I, I like the old cars. All right, Sheldon, tell me what we're looking at. And now I understand, first of all, that you just purchased this car. Yes. So what is it? What are we looking at? Well, this year is the Cadillac EXT. It's the uh, truck version of the uh, Escalade. And a uh, nice, fine North American product right here. A lot of power, a lot of room. This is a great truck right here. This is my favorite one on the market. This is a ride. This is number I love one this so color, far. too. Brand new. Brand new. Now, what are we talking about here? This is the first year that I think the turbo since 89 is making a convertible. One of the nicest cars we've seen today. Yeah, yeah probably the nicest you can one actually, so far. We can actually fit in these things. Yeah. You got to roll down the window and go, do you have any great Poupon? <laughs> <For sure. laughs> this is the one I think, uh, this was the extra car they used in uh, Dumb and Dumber when Harry and Lloyd uh, pulled up to the ski lodge with <laughs> their ski boots. Do you have his boots on? I took his, I took his boots. Oh, uh, you took his boots? <laughs> Dude, they got a lot of cars here. <laughs> Here's the classic car. You got a lot of cars here. The best is we're at, we're, we're at an auto show filled with like the world's <laughs> nicest cars, and this is what we want to look at. The toys, man. Something from '69. Boys with toys, right here. What we're looking at right now is a saline SS. It was in the movie Bruce Almighty. It's driven by God. <laughs> Zero to 100k in three seconds, which is just as fast as an F1 car. Remember the F1 car we saw earlier? Yep. That's their limit. Three seconds. This car does the same thing. Yeah. Shall we talk about what you're getting into? Well, this right here, if it was good enough for God, it's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> the whole deal throughout the show, I've noticed, is not, if 100 grand or less, you can get in, 100 grand, no good. This is a nice car right here. Where's the eject button? See that? He's going right through the roof in a second. Where, this is the James the Bond car. All right, Shelly, and last but not least, the H2 Hummer. 
Now, I understand that you are an owner of this said vehicle. Yes, this is a great truck, especially in the, in the Montreal winters. Uh, handles well in the snow. Well, listen, hey, uh, I think we're going to head out of here. All right. First of all, I want to uh, thank you for your time. Hope you had a good time. Yeah, I did. Thanks a lot. Um, and I got to ask before we leave, favorite car and why? Oh, man, we've seen some uh, some awesome ones, but I'd have to say the Saline uh, S7. I mean, that's just a, a powerful machine. It looks so cool. And uh, even though I didn't fit in it, just, uh, just the look of it, just on appearance alone, that's got to be the, uh, the hottest car in here. Be a Player gives you a chance to ask your favorite NHL player a question. For your chance to participate, visit NHLPA.com. Laura from Labrador City asked Patrick Lalene, does the downsizing of goalie equipment affect your play? Here's what Patrick had to say. Uh, Laura, well, uh, it's a good question. Uh, actually, uh, you know, myself, it doesn't really affect. Uh, my pads are, uh, they were probably half an inch longer than uh, the limit is. And, uh, I think uh, you know the, the biggest part was uh, the neat thing that they took away from us a little bit. I was a little worried in the beginning because uh, protection-wise, but uh, now that uh, we have the knee pads uh, to cover that, it, uh, it's no problem, and uh, you know they, they're not going to get to us. Now it's time for Cyber Scrater, brought to you by EA Sports 2004. This week we feature the animated highlights of Sheldon Surrey. player umusic.ca hit zone featuring Andrew WK and never let down in the album The Wolf. Young Stars game has only been around for three years, but it's already become one of the most popular events during All-Star Weekend. It pits the Stars of Tomorrow from the East against the Young Guns from the West. Joffrey Lupel is out there right now pitching in for the Western Young Guns. Joffrey was a first round selection of the Anaheim Mighty Ducks back in the 2002 entry draft. The Young Center has been busy this season, proving he belongs in the big leagues. He's already got over 20 points, a stat that helped him earn an invitation to this weekend's festivities. Here's Joffrey Lupel on Next Generation. My first memories would have to be uh, the outdoor rink. Just uh, my dad flooded the backyard, turned it into a backyard rink there. So that'd be my first memories, being out there five hours a day in the, in the morning before school. I've been out there and, and working on my skills and just, just having fun. Medicine Hat was, uh, it was a great time. The friendships and the bonds you make in junior are, are kind of unlike anything else because you're around those guys every You're going to school with them, you're playing hockey with them, you're hanging out with them at night. Going on 10 hour, 12 hour bus trips with them. The Mighty Ducks of Anaheim are very proud to select for the Missing Hat Tigers Western Hockey League, Geoffrey Lupo. I never really thought about the NHL until, until I went to junior and started to excel a bit there and then all of a sudden the NHL was a, was a possibility for me. Lupo scores! That was, I'd say that's the best experience of my career so far at World Juniors. It was uh, fortunate enough to play in Canada, in Halifax. It was, uh, it, it was amazing. My first NHL game was in Dallas. My favorite player is Mike Medano, so I just remember out there in warm-up, I was kind of peeking over the red line all the time, watching, watching what Mike was doing a little bit. The game's a different pace 
The guys work so hard every day at practice and, and games, and that, that took a little adjusting just to be able to, to go that hard every night. I struggled with that for a while, maybe a little inconsistency at the start of the season, and uh, I feel I'm adjusting now, but obviously there's still a lot of uh, learning to be done. Be a Player Trivia is brought to you by EA Sports NHL 2004. If it's in the game, it's in the game. I am looking for the man who scored the most goals in the decade of the 90s. Jeremy Roenick. Could be. Give me a guess, Jerome. 90s, I'd in say the 90s. Uh, Jaeger. Close? Curry? No. I will. Sorry, Curry? No, no, no. Uh, Jaeger, sorry. Not uh, Yammer? Yeah. I'd Brett Hall. Very good, Birdie. That was that one, buddy. Uh, yeah, he's definitely Joe active. Sackett. No, not Joey. No. Mr. Garen, you got a... Brett Hall, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, Hall. Yeah, you got it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hall, yeah. There we go, Brett Hall. Yeah. Brett Hall. There we go. Oh, geez. How did we not get that the first uh, time? Holly, I apologize, buddy. <laughs> you should have been the first one that I thought of. More from the 2004 NHL All-Star Weekend and Sheldon Surrey when we return. If I'm not playing hockey next year, what am I going to do? Be a player, sponsored by EA Sports NHL 2004. If it's in the game, it's in the game. I'm here now at the Eastern Conference All-Star Practice. With me is the star of the show, Sheldon Surrey. Sheldon, how did it feel to be named to the All-Star team this year? Well, it was a tremendous honor. I know uh, when we talked last time, uh, you know, I wasn't taking it for granted, I was sure, but to be here with the company of some uh, unbelievable hockey players, guys I admire growing up, Mark Messier, and uh, some teammates used to play with in Jersey, and, and some current teammates, it's uh, it's awesome. What an experience. Now, who'd you bring down here? Who's with you this weekend? Well, I brought my dad and uh, my mom and uh, my sister, her family, my wife, and my baby. Uh, just, uh, you know, a family weekend. Just get the experiences. I know uh, they're proud of me to, for being here, and uh, you know it's a tremendous honor, like I said, just to be here and to be uh, for them to be a part of it too. Thanks very much. I know you worked hard to be here, given your serious wrist injury. There's more with the star of our show, Sheldon Surrey, All-Star Defenseman of the Montreal Canadiens. Tell me the sequence of events involving your major wrist injury. Well, it was. Uh, November 2001, we were playing Florida here at home, and, and I came off after the first period, and I said, geez, you know what, I think I broke my wrist. Got x-rays two days later, and they came up negative, so they thought it was a sprained wrist. So I played within a month, and then, you know, two days later, I was going to get surgery, first of four. I had surgery again in September of 2002, wasn't healing again, I had a bone graft, they took a bone out of my hip and put it in my wrist on that one. And the third one was in November because it just wasn't getting any better. So they took another bone out of my wrist uh, in here with veins and transplanted the veins into uh, into the scaphoid bone. It was a scaphoid uh, fracture. That's unbelievable. And, and then I had scarring on your. I know, you know. And then this one I had in, in it wasn't getting any better. And in March of this year of 2003, I went in and, and it was cracked again. So I had to go down to Duke University and and they took a bone right out of my knuckle in here and transplanted it on the other side to try to get more blood flow in there. So four surgeries and, and rehabbed all summer, um, you know, to get my wrist a little bit stronger. And, uh, got cleared to play at a, a training camp this year. What's it like for a guy that's used to playing, you know, 80 games a year, to be completely sort of out of the game 2002, 2003? It was the worst. Just, it, it just, really ripped my heart out. I wanted to go to war with the guys, you know. As funny as it sounds, sometimes it's not the winning that you just love. It's going through the tough times, you know, the bonding, the plane rides, the meetings, the scouting reports, the traveling to different cities, all that. And it was just go to the rink in the morning, rehab for a couple hours, skate by myself. I couldn't shoot pucks, I had a broken hand. So I was skating the whole year. And that wasn't fun, let me tell you. It was tough, the toughest part of my life. And you start thinking about, okay, now I got a wife, now I got a baby on the way. Um, if I'm not playing hockey next year, what am I gonna do? What was it like to be part of a team again? You know, it was like playing the Stanley Cup final, my first uh, training camp scrimmage. Um, you know, I went out there, my hand was just buzzing, like, uh, I, it was sore, you know, from the, and I was like, well, you know what, it's sore, but it's not that pain that I'd always felt. 
I said, this is good. This is a good sign. You know, it, just to be around the team, around the guys, joking around, seeing my jersey hanging in the stall, being out there, you know, shooting pucks at the coach's feet, whatever we were doing. It, it was awesome, you know, and it, it was a feeling that uh, that I almost forgotten how good it felt. You scored more goals this year than you have in your entire career. What's going on out there? Do you feel like there's no pressure, like you're playing like a kid again? Exactly. You know what? There is there is no pressure on me. At some points last year, I never thought that I was going to be back even playing. Um, so like I said, I don't take it for granted. I think I've become more of a, um, a student of the game after sitting out and being able to watch so much hockey. But, you know, also I'm getting I'm getting added responsibility and, and they're putting us out in key situations, uh, me to getting more minutes on the power play and stuff. And, I feel like I'm capable of doing it. I feel confident. I feel like I'm just having fun. And, and you know, the key right now is that I'm focused and, and I'm not taking it for granted. Tell me about that game against Pittsburgh. You set the Canadians' all-time franchise record for points in a game by a defenseman. Did you even know whose record you broke that night? It, it is so unbelievable. The whole time, I'd never thought about the record. Um, until Patrice Brisebois said to me, he goes, you just tied a record, you know, for most assists in the game. And I just looked at him and said, well, I don't know what to say. It's, it's unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. And then I scored a goal to break it. I certainly never expected it. I don't think people expected it from me. Um, but that kind of makes it more special. Over the past few seasons, it seems like every time we come here, it's been something else. Whether it's been too many injuries, the Patrice Brisebois situation, uh, Saku's courageous battle against cancer. Does it finally seem now like the team's starting to turn the page? Well, I think we've, the injuries and stuff, I think, are, are um, out of your control. I think it's kind of brought us together as a group, and, and we realize, hey, we're playing for a pretty great franchise here, and if we're willing to work hard and, and uh, with the leadership we have now, good things can happen to us. While this may not be the fastest ride around, it's certainly one of my favorites. Another great display here at Fantasy. Well, that wraps up this edition of Be a Player from the 2004 All-Star Weekend. I'd like to thank Sheldon Surrey for joining us both here and in Montreal. Make sure you catch next week's show. We're off to Phoenix, hook up with Captain Coyote, Shane Doan. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Brett Lindros is clothing supplied by The Coop, clothing for men, Toronto. NHLPA.com is your source for the latest stats, scores, and NHL player information. Click on Be a Player for the latest show information or to send us your questions and comments. You'll find it all at NHLPA.com. I mean, if you want to get off your wallet, we can actually yeah. drive away in this thing today. If, if I get off my wallet, yeah. yeah. It's like 100 grand plus and there's no trunk. I might need a uh, back adjustment up. <laughs> <laughs>